Today on Dylan Talks Tone, we're gonna make a cheap fret job better. How's it going? So my name is Dylan, and this is Dylan Talks Tone, and you know on this channel we have all kinds of guitar tech videos, setup, wiring, pots, caps, whatever, all kinds of stuff about guitars. We have like 400 videos. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, and uh, I think you'll find value in a lot of the stuff we're doing. One of the things we're talking about is I've got a couple of these little mini strats. Uh, one of our, actually one of our viewers was gracious enough to actually send me two of these things with the intention that we would make some videos on just basic, inexpensive guitars, how to make them better. Now we have done a couple of videos like this already. We'll put the little gray box up there and you can click that and watch that video after you're done watching this one. Um, but we want to talk about really taking things to the next level. Now you might not do it on your little mini strat, but there are many, many less expensive guitars that can use a little, you know, little work. One of the things on a less expensive guitar that has a lot to do with the feel of the guitar is the fretwork. Okay, so on our other video we talked about how to dress the ends of the frets with a really simple kit. Okay, you can watch that video. And then uh, this guitar actually didn't really need that so much. But one of the things that I, kind of a pet peeve of mine, and it happens all the time on inexpensive guitars, is how rough the tops of the frets are. And as a result, it'll take a while for those frets to kind of play in uh, because of sitting around in, you know, there's nickel in them. So sitting around in a music store for however long this guitar sat, um, having it shipped across the country in different humidities and stuff, uh, nickel will actually kind of tarnish a little bit. And so we're going to go ahead and rip the strings off of this thing. I want to put tens on it anyway. It's got nines on it now. So I want to put tens on it and hit the setup. And I also want to go ahead and give these frets a polish. To do that, uh, Lizard Spit actually sent me, uh, this is not like a sponsored video or anything, but he sent me some of these to try a couple of months ago and I really, really like them. So he sent me a couple more. The Ultimate Fret Polishing System. We'll leave a link to Lizard Spit in the video, the link below. We're gonna rip this open. Let's get the strings off this guitar. We're gonna rip this open and we're gonna get these strings polished up, or the frets polished up. And I think you'll really notice, if you did this, a playability difference in your guitar, just the comfort on the guitar will be better. Let's get these strings off of here. All right. So the first question a lot of people ask me is, is it okay to take all the strings off of the guitar? Absolutely. There's no other way that you'd be able to do this work that we're about to do if you uh, left some or half of the strings on the guitar. It just doesn't make sense. If you're gonna leave the guitar for a long time, I would recommend not leaving strings off of a guitar for a long time because it'll actually, the thing can move over a period of time. But just for the service time that we're about to do this, it's gonna kind of pop one way and then when you put the string tension back on, it's gonna go back to where it was. We're gonna change string gauges and so I'm gonna have to do the whole setup anyway on this particular guitar. But for you on a regular basis to just take all your strings off at the same time and do some fret maintenance like we're doing right now or to oil the fretboard, none of that matters. You'll be just fine. All right, so let's take a look at what we got in this kit. Let's rip this thing apart. We have a lizard spit polishing cloth, and we have the package of stuff. Now this is pretty cool. It's gonna give you some fret protectors, okay? And it's also gonna give you these little pads. Now these little pads have uh, like rubbing compound and oil mixed in with them, and that's what you're gonna use to polish these frets. So let's take a look real quick, real nice and up close at doing one of these frets and I'm gonna show you uh, how much difference it'll make on the surface and the playing surface of the fret. All right, so let's go ahead and grab one of these pads. They give you enough to use one on each fret, but I find that you don't need that many. This to me is the least obtrusive way to do this to a guitar and gives you the best result. So we go like this.
Now let's look at this fret up close. Now look at the shine on this fret as opposed to this one. It's plain to see the difference. And it took, I did that in real time, I did not fast forward it, that's how long it took to do that one fret. Let's go ahead and do the rest of the frets on this guitar. So then the next question that a lot of people have is why would you just not use steel wool? Do not ever use steel wool on an electric guitar ever for any reason. People will argue with me about this all day long on the internets and say, well, I put tape over the pickups because the reason is because the magnetic uh, thing in the pickups, you know, as far as the fibers from the steel wool get stuck in the pickups. Don't take the chance. The reason I say don't take the chance is because I have seen people take the chance many, many times. This is my own experience. This is not anecdotal. And you will ruin a pickup. If not today, at some point, because that pickup will pick up <laughs> those particles. And um, you think that you got it all off with tape. You think that you got it off with a vacuum cleaner. You did not. There will be particles in your pickups. It just happens over time. And you might think, well, I got them all this time. But will you get them all next time? Did you get them all last time? No. And I know that to be true because I've had to rewind pickups for people because the steel shavings get inside the pickups and then they corrode and they cause a problem with the coil. They cause the coil to short. Boom. Your pickup is dead. Do not do that. Just don't do it. A kit like this is not expensive and it does the job much more uh, effectively and methodically than steel wool. Plus, steel wool does damage to the wood. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. People will argue that with me all day long and I'm, I'm telling you, uh, they think they know because they can't see it with their bare eyes, you know, just with your normal eyes. Uh, I've seen inside the pickup. I know. Cool part is the little oil that he uses in this rubbing compound does a nice job on your fretboard. Now he gives you like one pad for each fret, but I actually just used one <laughs> pad for about half the fretboard. So it's kind of cool. So you're just gonna say, well, it costs X amount of dollars for that thing, but you get this whole bag and I'm gonna use two of these things on this entire guitar. So you might have, you know, three, four round trips of doing this or three or four guitars worth of material here. Makes it a lot more cost effective. Let's go ahead and finish up the rest of these. Nice, some smooth frets. Nice and shiny. Let's go ahead and get some tens on here. I'm gonna check the setup and then I'll show you when we're done. All right, so now it's done. So now we have a very inexpensive guitar uh, that has polished frets and the playing feel has just felt, it feels a lot better. I put 10s on it, I rechecked the setup, and uh, it just feels better. Uh, the thing about it is, a lot of lower priced guitars are going to have lower quality frets anyway, and so they're going to be more susceptible to corrosion and oxidation and that sort of thing. So having a kit like this laying around the house all the time, you see I have plenty of squares left to do this to other guitars that I have around here or this guitar again when it needs it in a few months, just keep it in a little Ziploc bag there, and it'd be perfect. I just think it's a lot. It does just this little operation on your next string change can do a lot. I feel like I might actually contact the company and start selling the stuff on my website because I believe in it that much. I really like it. Yeah, it's really cool. So this is just another step that you can do uh, for not a lot of money that will improve the playing experience on a less expensive guitar. Like we said before, this is very, very important because 
inexperienced players, you may say, well, they're not going to notice the difference. But making the guitar playing experience as comfortable as possible for them is going to make them a guitar player. If you give them an uncomfortable guitar to play that isn't intonated correctly and they feel like they're out of tune and they sound like they're out of tune and the guitar is hard to play and it is not comfortable, they're not going to be guitar players for very long. Taking these few extra steps is the way to make sure to at least give them a great chance at staying with what we're teaching them in the guitar world. My name is Dylan. This is Dylan Talks Tone. If you have any questions about guitar setup, pickups, strings, any of that kind of stuff, we've got a whole other series going right now about guitar strings, really kind of fun. Put it in the comments below if you have a question and we'll make a video just for you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you can, and the little bell next to it, so you know next time we make a cool video just like this. And until next time, I hope you keep playing.